Good morning all, and you're very welcome to this, our third uh, live stream. And uh, hopefully, as we go along, we are getting better and better at doing this. I can see that some of you have been talking to one another before we started, which is, which is great. Uh, I have hopefully sent out some links by email for some people who were having difficulty. So uh, as you uh, come on, and we know that uh, you are here, maybe you would either let us know in the comments if you're on YouTube, and uh, if you're not, and uh, you can't make a comment, do it on Friends of Anoiga, and we see who we have. We have Declan, Susan, Mary uh, so far, and uh, see if there's anybody else out there. Just pull up a comment and let us know that you are that you're coming to us. Nothing, nothing yet. Okay, there's always a couple of minutes afterwards because I do forget that I'm a good bit ahead of everybody else. So we look forward to seeing them coming in. Well, you're all very welcome, and I'm getting more and more impressed with you because the quality of image is is getting higher and higher. And I hope you are all learning this new technology, including myself. Every time we make a mistake, we learn. And there hasn't been too many in recent times, although there has been a couple of dilemmas. I want to be particularly thankful to those who are absolutely struggling trying to get it up and going and are still making the effort. Now, why have I got a white centre in my screen? Oh, it went. Maybe you'll see that and maybe you won't. Anyway. Uh, thank you, Etna, for putting up the link. The link is on Skype, uh, probably in the class is where you put it, Etna, I would presume, uh, which is great. I sent it out by email to people as well, so there's plenty of links out there. You can invite any of your friends, and you don't have to be a member of the group, or um, you don't have to just be, it's just open, it's open to the public, and anyone can join in in uh, what we are doing. Okay, so where do we go? As we're getting settled down. Well, the first person I woke up this morning to realise, and I'm very, very impressed with, and that is uh, Declan. Declan. Declan Gannon the Great, right? Declan, I'm very impressed with you today. And uh, I, I, I liked you so much, I, I, I got excited and you got more than one like from me. But that's that. Uh, ease up on. Instagram. Patricia has joined us. Oh, here we are. And just the photograph is up. It's not coming through. Oh, it's starting to come through there well, well, well on the screen. And I have looked. He's got a whole load of really um, nice photographs uh, be, beside it. Also on Instagram today, directly underneath him, we have Tony. I think it's Tony. The sound is very weak. Um, I presume that is with with everybody. I can pump up my sound, but who said the sound is weak? Declan. Declan. Declan, try putting up the volume on the YouTube video is one place the volume might be down, or the volume might be down on your computer. Anybody else with bad sound, maybe you might uh, mention that as well. But it could very well be that um, it's, um, it's just that you haven't put up the volume on uh, your uh, computer. Right, so and then Tony, as I was saying, Tony from Malahide, who's just directly underneath him, and that's the one Tony ha has put up. Now, I've been practicing with this since the 80th anniversary, and uh, it is a lovely area to work in Instagram for putting up photographs. Uh, and when we have photographs up in one place, it's easy just to copy them and put them up in another place at, at the same time. It doesn't take very much, much effort. Um, so the other thing that I would like to point out to Declan and to the rest of you, when Declan put up his image, he, put, he puts it up with a hashtag, right? And um, w when you put up wh whatever hashtag you want to, always put into it, if you can or if you wouldn't oblige us, by putting in hashtag Anoiga photo. Because all the ones that I've been setting up, I've been putting in as Anoiga, hash or hashtag Anoiga photo. And that means that anybody in the group or anybody who's in Anoiga can find your images by using that hashtag, right? So uh, I've been putting up stuff in the, in the past purely as experimental. So uh, uh, it would be great if you were to have those extra ones going up there as uh, hashtag Anoiga photo. Um, I know we keep on getting hit by more and more technology, uh, but uh, if, if we stick with it within these couple of weeks that we will be... Um, 
in lockdown we will be hopefully able to to learn a lot more if we come out the opposite side the world will have changed so that's that bit okay now anybody else with sound have an improvement of sound from from anybody no no, no improvement yet no nothing on on friends of yet nothing on friends of okay so hopefully you are all maintaining forward progress and uh, getting to Sorry, the the sound is very low. Okay, Etna. Right then, we're going to. Why would that not work? This is the one that's got. This is the one that's got control over the sound. It's not. It's not moving. Um. Hold camera. Okay, it's not moving here for 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 me. Maybe, I I can look into that. I'm going to go to to um to desktop now and that's in a different spot hopefully the sound will be a little bit stronger here um uh let me see it's not it's sound why aren't we getting good sound, no, sound. Mary, mac. mary mac has no sound oh, i'll keep on 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 seeing what the problem is we're on desktop now yes there seems to be a problem with sound S sound is good for Patricia, right? Um, yeah, and Bonnie, Bonnie, the yeah. sound is very is is very yeah. weak. Yeah. Yes, I I I notice that it's um audio in. Ah, oh, look at that. Does that sound better? That's what we should have been seeing. Hopefully everything has gone tickety-boo. Do you see the way the green line is popping all over? Ah, typical. One of the buttons not pressed again. I would hope that you're all now shortly coming with much better sound coming. It'll take about a minute before we actually get to, to, to that stage of... of, of oh, yeah, it might come back to you, Declan. It might come back to you. I'll keep on talking anyway, and hopefully... Uh, we will have an improvement. Yeah, no, sound. no sound. Yeah, it's it's yeah it's funny. Why is that happening again? Um, you're a couple of. Hmm. Oh. Have I lost? No, I haven't lost the stream. Yeah, this this sounds like I can see a sound going backwards and forwards for me anyway, giving up a good um, a good reading. I'm going to bring it up to the maximum that I can give it, and maybe if I talk a little bit louder as well, it might uh, improve it. Theoretically, you should all be getting sound now at this stage. Yeah, okay. It was it was just that we hadn't got it up um, enough. Okay. It uh, should be r r rattling backwards and forwards. Okay, I think we are we are safe um, or to uh, move on and um, talk about other things. Okay, now why hasn't? Okay, let's go. I hope you all have your A A A class set up. This is the stuff that came in. Um, oh yes, it was. It, yes, thanks, Bernice. And uh, in A A A, we have uh, our project two that we're working on. So this is the stuff that has come in, and I'll go and show you what has come has come in. It worked much much better this way this this time for us. Um, 
class Patricia started her call. Oh, Pr Patricia, don't ring me on. Oh, she put something on to class. Don't ring on class, whatever you do, because it'll probably knock out my camera. Okay, this is building up nicely. This gave us trouble in the last stream, so hopefully we'll be seeing photographs uh, coming. Okay, come on, picture. Show picture. Oh, great. I, Irene, which got back now. Okay, Irene, that's 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 fantastic. That appears on Skype. It's it's okay to put a comment comment in there on the class one, uh, but don't put don't start using the camera because the, the camera is shared with the with the two, with this live stream and my Skype. I should so um, hopefully it'll, it'll go okay. Anyway, this one came in from Susan, and uh, I had a look at it, and I'm going to make a few comments about these. I'm going to talk about. Uh, if you're going into competition or if you wanted to improve it or whatever. This is not meant as a criticism towards anyone. If you've got an image that explains a concept or an idea, uh, it's great um, because that's where we can learn. If there's something wrong, it's where we will learn fr from it as well. Uh, my suggestions are only suggestions. You can disagree with them and they are done relatively uh, quickly and um, this one, as I say, came in from Susan, and I had a little play with it, and I I came up with this combination of it, right? Where I went in a little bit, um, I went in a little bit closer, and I um cropped it in tight tighter. I used less of the wall in front, and 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 came in quite close to it, right? Now, this is a look at the information over. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, who's jumping? Come back. There's a, little, a slow response here. Uh, we're back to, to uh, Susan again. And then we move on to the next one, which is the one where I have it cropped in. In this one, we're going to talk about the size of the file, as you can see over here, is 1.6 megabytes. So this probably started off, and uh, maybe we should have looked at it on the previous one. It would have been a little bit bigger up there because I've cropped it, which makes it a little bit smaller. Now, if we look at how the photograph was taken, and this is the metadata from the from her her uh, camera when she was taking the uh, the photograph, and I we we talk about using automatic, we talk about using a uh, program, we talk about aperture priority and shutter priority. And these are all the technical things that are going along in, in the background. And if you want to bring your photography to the next level, these are important concepts to know and to understand. I know it takes effort to understand them, but once you get your head around them, they, they aren't difficult. There are three things in the air at the one time, right? The shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Uh, and other little things as well in, in, in the agenda. So this worked out the camera, whatever way it was set, say it was set on program, um, it decided it was a thousandth of a second. Now you don't really need a thousandth of a second in order to to stop these boys from moving. They're, they're not racing horses. A racing horse, yes, a thousandth of a second, but not for stationary horses. And it becomes f1.9, which is quite a wide open aperture, which is good in this occasion. Maybe that's what Su uh, Susan is trying to achieve to get the background to go, um, to get a little bit more blurred, so that they will stand out a little bit more. Uh, that was that would be a good argument for it. And yet, 40 ISO is the speed of it now. Uh, 40 is actually quite low. I don't think you need it that low. I think a higher a higher um, a, a, a ISO would give you a better result. But, you know, going by 40 allows her to get the, 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 the small aperture here because it was possibly a bright day. But there's a real challenge in this photograph, and it will apply to, to every one of you. And when I brought this into Photoshop, no matter what I did, there is no detail in the highlights. There, it's not there. It wasn't in the original exposure, so it's not going to be there afterwards. There's no way that it's going to detail, it's going to show up in the highlights, called burnt highlights. No detail there at all, no matter how much you darken it or how much you, you, you do to it. 
So the way you overcome this in reality, if you've got your histogram turned on in the back of your camera, you might notice that the histogram is all off to one side. That would be one guidance for you. On a lot of cameras, there's a setting that will give you a warning of burnt highlights, and it will be a flashing picture. The area that is... Uh, uh, overexposed will be flashing. Sometimes people saw it and see it in the back of their camera and they say, oh, there's something wrong. That's just telling you that you've got a burnt highlight in that particular area. So if the photograph was underexposed, um, it would, you would be able to get into the, uh, into the highlights and see the detail in it. Underexposure brings out detail in highlights. Overexposure brings out detail in shadow. So you can decide which one you want it to go for. You've often heard me talk about um, if you were an advanced photographer and you, you were doing this, uh, you'd possibly be shooting in RAW because if you got it wrong in RAW, there's a good chance you'd be able to get that highlight detail back. Now, I know RAW is very heavy and an awful lot of you are a long way away from RAW, but it's important to talk about it at this stage. Now, as far as the actual photograph is concerned, Seth, it's brilliant. Absolutely decisive moment is caught between the two of them. All right, and and that is absolutely fair. I've also cleaned up a, a, a couple of bits in the in the background as far as I can remember. So that's a really nice uh, photograph, and hopefully we can all learn by um by this. All right, we move on to the next one. This one came in from Pat. Pat sent in two. So this is one of the two that he sent in, and when I went to play with it and see what I would do with it. And it's not, you know, it, it's fine as it is, but I was trying to bring it on to to see what I would do with it as as a sample. So um, when I went playing with, I show you what what I what I got. It's a decent size image. Look, two point eight megabytes. It's a good size. It's shot at two hundred and fifty of a second, which is a reasonable shutter speed for one hundred twenty fifth. Um, Upwards, you can hand hold, so you can hold this, right? The ISO is down at 80. I presume that this is in a very bright lit uh, location, and it is f10, right? f10.8 in actual fact, right? Which is giving a small aperture, which is giving a great depth of field, is what he wants to try and achieve here from the foreground into the background. So anyway, I got playing with it, and this is what I came up with—a different, a different perspective on it. I. I haven't worked on any of these images any more than four or five minutes because and uh, if you're going for exhibition you just can't have a straightforward print you nearly always have to do something with it and there's nothing wrong with that that's a part of the fun we used to be going into the dark room and doing it whereas we now do it in a um, in the uh, computer now I think I might have darkened down the sky here a wee bit too much. I darkened down this little bit here. But that was just a different way of, of looking at the image. And the image size has stayed quite 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 similar at 2.9. And obviously these things have, have remained the same as well. Okay. Where's my oh there's my arrow? The next one came in from Patricia. And uh, Patricia has a little challenge insofar as her computer computer's gone a little bit kaput where all her magnificent images sit and she is working with her iPad and her iPhone and she is the new breed of photographers that we're going to have coming along who are operating on phone and on their iPads and a huge amount of stuff can be done here and it's great to have Patricia because we're looking at it in a different perspective and looking at it in a different way. Patricia doesn't have the AAA folder. She's got an album on her iPad called whatever, Best Photographs or whatever. And she's been putting all her images in there at present. Uh, so she's working with the images that, that are on the phone and on the iPad. The iPad phone is very good. And this is the way a lot of our new members coming in will be operating. Now, we do have a couple of little challenges to, to get over, right? Uh, this was a straight print, as was taken. Uh, Patricia later uh, has learned and worked out how to edit it within the iPad and to crop things and make things brighter and darker. But at this stage, we were just at the learning stage. So this is the photograph that uh, she gave me to put in. Do you see how small it is? 94 kilobytes. It's tiny in size, right? Um, the rest of the information didn't follow through on it. 
um, that's the way she sent it in. Now that might be for all sorts of reasons. It might be because it's been downsized when it's been transferred. It might be all sorts of issues. I would assume that it's much bigger on the iPad. Now, when we're talking about technicalities, this will apply to other people as well. And it might not be any of those. It might be that you've got your, your camera set to the wrong resolution. Maybe you're not using it at the top resolution. So, so if we can learn about resolution and, and the implications that are involved in it with these photographs, it will be a worthwhile learning exercise. Okay, so that is Patricia. Now, the other problem I had with this one with Patricia was that it wasn't a JPEG. So I had to go through the usual system. This is the exact same shot except for I made it into a JPEG, the way I showed you to do a true uh, paint. Now, Patricia can't quite cope with that and renaming and whatever. We haven't worked out quite that as how that's done. But that doesn't matter. I can I can do it here, and we go on the way. So I started to look at, at this and see what I could do with it. Um, this swan here is giving me trouble. This black thing here is giving me, and I've done away with these swans here, and this is what I did to the image, all right? Uh, I've taken out the swans there. Now, I worked relatively quickly on these. So, you know, if you were going to exhibition, you'd go back and you do a better job there. I'm just showing you roughly what, what can be done without going to too much trouble. And I darkened down the uh, sky and I put a bit more sky into it. So that's the, the little change I put on that. And also, I thought it would look very, very well in black and white. Okay? So don't forget black and white. You know, it's a, it's a super medium to, to work with. So that was Patricia's. The next one came in from Mary. And uh, in this case, you can see the size of the file is up to 2.4 megabytes. Now, you're probably shooting your camera as being shot at about 10 megabytes or, or something like that. And then the JPEG compresses it down to 2.4. But it starts as maybe a 10 megapixel uh, image and it goes down to 2.4 so you can look at what size it comes on the camera uh, in the actual file so keep an eye on these sort of things uh, I know people are going to be screaming at me now but how do I do it go to your file right click and come down to properties and, and click on properties and it will show it to you there or on your camera if you put the information up it will show you all this information so here again, the camera or the system has worked at 40 uh, ISO, which is, seems it doesn't have to be that low. Uh, but it did it, and see the shutter speed it got, 1, 2,500 2, of a second. You, was, you would stop footballers in full flight at that speed, right? Um, uh, so it, it's interesting. Now that might have come across uh, as a result of the camera set on automatic or on program. But as I was saying, what we're trying to do here is what we're, we're trying to talk about these sort of issues and these type of things to give us an idea of, 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 where, of where we're going. It's f1.7, right, which isn't giving a huge amount of depth of field, but because it is in the distance, um, it's not causing any trouble. Uh, I didn't do a huge amount with it. I darkened down the roof here because I thought it was a bit on the dark side, and I took out these chappies, and this is what I came up with. Oh, I also took the blue out of it. If you notice, the previous one had a lot of blue. And I put a little bit of yellow into it, and the green is starting to creep in now. A little bit. So take it out with a little bit of magenta. Um, she took it on the phone. That's great. Now, remember, on the phone, you have a complete um, control over, you in your manual settings, a lot of manual settings you can get in to change different bits and pieces. Now, when, when something is automatic and it does it, it just assumed that that was the best combination. And it produced an excellent photograph and there's nothing wrong with the photograph, right? Um, but now we know in, in the phone, you can go into your settings on the phone and you can change these things around. Obviously, I always say, leave it set on the automatic or the program. Uh, Take it out, shoot first and ask questions later. But if you want to produce your, you know, you've got a really good shot, you want to go to that next degree, the second shot, you can take all of these sort of things uh, in, in, into consideration. This one came in from Maura. <coughs> and when I looked at this at first, I said to myself, I wonder why she picked that as her best photograph. And as I looked at it, I can see why. If you were put this into a competition, 
all the things that judges would say, uh, you know, would come 100% on this one. Look at the sharpness. Look at the sharpness of the eye. Look at the background out of focus. Look at the detail. Right. All those things will, will be said about it. And it's also we can all fall into the trap of considering a photograph to be our best photograph. Uh, just because it was very, very difficult to take. And this was difficult. And for Maura, with the equ equipment that she has, that was absolutely super to get a shot like that. Now, she probably cheated uh, by putting the camera closer, or maybe she didn't. She zoomed. Let's see what she did. Right. Because it's a giveaway here. It's 4.7 megabytes in size. Right. So that's giving us a decent size image to be able to work with. Right on a screen here, it doesn't really matter. But when you're going into competition and you're print, you're printing, getting that as big as possible, um, is a good advantage. Now, the camera shot was shot at 400 ISO, um, which is good. Now, you might be able to be able to go faster and still get as good a result. We'll be talking about that later on in our live streams, not today, but later on. And it shot at one sixtieth of a second. Now that is asking a lot uh, to if you're going to handhold, but it is handheld preferably, so there's no shake from the handheld. It shot at five point four, which is relatively wide open. It's not two point eight, but that's what's putting the background out of focus, right? Which is what you want to achieve, right? And it is a lovely photograph, and all everything is technically correct. And that's what you need when you're going into competition. You know, they're all taken as 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 givens, right? So I went playing with it slightly. Now I don't know if on your screens you can you can see it. Depends upon the screen you're looking at it on, uh, and on your own screen of where she saw it or whatever. Uh, I on my screen it looked a little bit blue. So in the recovery of it or in my variation of it, I've taken some of that blue out of it. Maybe that's what you want in the shot. And I have included a lot more space around it. I thought the previous one was very it was very crowded and it needed a little bit of space uh, around it. This is the one that I spent the most amount of time working on uh, because I ex extended the background. I was very lucky because the background was, was all, you know, higgledy piggledy type, which makes it really great for uh, extending. It took a little bit longer uh, to do this one than it didn't actually touch the image very much, except I did go to the levels and put a little bit more contrast into it, and obviously I took the blue out of it. Now I know I can hear Maura screaming at the screen here that she did levels, right? But and I know this has happened before, so for some unknown reason, by the time the image gets along the way the levels don't seem to have been moved and I know she moves them and she does it on the computer so I don't know why they are not following through or what, what the story is but it's an interesting issue isn't it to, to have a look at and see why it is happening uh, that was only marriage and it wasn't the end of the world but when you're talking in competition it's these extra little bits that gives you that extra little uh, um, those extra little uh, points and when you learn how to do this at your more advanced level, uh, when you go to take your photograph for your own everyday use, your quality improves. I always find that when people are exhibiting and putting in stuff as you do every week, your own stuff by default improves. It just does because you're becoming more and more aware of saying, I'm not going to make that mistake. And because there are advantages, there's two sessions every week. So it's not like you're a week or whatever uh, behind if you were to go to exhibition with that you'd obviously do a little bit more than what i do i can see things that are wrong there's a line there now that shouldn't be there but i did it relatively quickly just to show you what can be done i think that's a super shot has everything that one would uh, want in a, in a photograph this one came in from irene and i looked at it and it's lovely and it's beautiful and i couldn't improve on it i couldn't change it i couldn't do anything i left it exactly as it was i love all this out of focusness here the the use of the semicircle that is a, that's the type look at the beautiful lighting on it everything is set up for success right now when i come over here mm, you thought you were getting away easy didn't you and i look at the size of the file it's 625 kilobytes. It's tiny. So it looks brilliant here on the screen. But if you went to try and print that, 
uh, into an exhibition, it would start to sh it would start to pixelate because you need a much better quality image, technical image, uh, to for for printing. And what I think has happened is which you would expect, this has been cropped from a much larger photograph. And when you crop from a larger photograph, the size of the image goes down, so the amount of enlargement you can do on it. Now, it might go a bit what we call grainy or noisy or a little bit pixelated in, in the print, but that might even add to it in a competition. I'm not saying it's a negative thing. Now look at the shutter speeds and the ISO. The ISO was 125, right, which, you know, we... It's one five hundredth of a second. I can understand that because these chappies move around, and it's f four, which is fairly good because that's knocked a, um, a good bit of the background out for, for you as well. But look at this: is one hundred and forty six millimeter. So that probably means that you are using the zoom on your camera to get it. Now I'm only guessing these sort of things. That's what judges do, and then everybody screams at the camera if it's there. Image. No, 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 that's not what I did. Okay. But that looks what it did. And that is not an easy photograph to say. But look, you've got the detail in here. You've got detail there. I don't know how it would print. So that's the that's the one I would think about on, on your one. I, I didn't change it or do anything to it. It stayed as it was. This was from the great Gary. And um, sorry, Gary, I... Uh, was uh, we, we, we had challenges with Gary's stuff coming in. It came in perfect in the end uh, on the on the Skype uh, to me. And that is the easiest, simplest way for me to deal with it. I just have to put my cursor on the image and, and, and save as and put it into the appropriate folder. And it makes life really, really easy for me. All right. Um, this is a very interesting one uh, that Gar Gary sent into this and another one. So I'm, I'm working with this one. And I thought it was a lovely, lovely photograph. I didn't realise something until I went playing with it afterwards. So obviously the bits that are causing us challenges is this wire up here, and this chappy here, and this bit of white cloud up here. This house is very dominant here on this side over here. So now you'll probably disagree with me in all sorts of things on yeah. this. It's a lock house, as Mary says. Let's go to what I did to it. Now that's what I did to it. Uh, I actually noticed that I missed the lamppost. I would have taken the lamppost out as well. I worked relatively quickly on this because it came in late last night. So I, I liked it a little bit earlier so that I can get a chance to work on them. But I don't mind. I'm very, very thankful that an image comes in. So that's what I, I worked on it. And I have taken out all this here that was taken. It took, The amount of work I have done on this took me about five minutes. I'm not expecting people to spend hours and hours and hours in front of it. I cropped the sides of the building out of here because it was taking your eye from it. And if you look on, on this shot, I have brightened up certain little bits of it and, and brought it in. And I darkened down other bits here. I could have probably cut that grass a little bit and cloned some more gr grass in there. Right, so it is a lovely, lovely shot. And the other thing that I found very interesting with this, and we'll have to ask uh, Gary, the texture in it is very interesting. It looks looks like it was one of the effects on the camera that he used, or he put a filter over it, or he did something. Um, it would be greatly improved if we could have something sitting on one of the, the turrets where they intersect to be a centre of interest. Right, because it's just it's just lacking the, the center of interest that would make this absolutely pop. You can see, you know, you should have brought your models along with you that day. But isn't it a beautiful shot? Right, it's a beautiful shot taken at that time of the year. It's a place you can go back to again. And if you had family or whatever, you could just put your family sitting here and take an environmental photograph of them there. It's a super location. Why won't we move? Gary, why are we stuck with you? Oh, yeah, here we are. We can move on. Now, this one came in from Etna. And I really like this one. And, um, I, you know, this has huge potential, right? And I went working on this. Spent about five minutes working on it. Um, and worked about the composition, where the composition lines would be and whatever. And did a little bit of work on it, and this is what I came up with. All right, and I think this is a super shot. I think this is, you know, this is in the premier division, right? And um, 
obviously it's been a little bit of cheating in it, right? Um, I have uh, I've pulled the sky up a little bit, and I have I have darkened it down to get all this emotional effect, and then I've highlighted up the top of the screen. Took about five minutes to do all this. I think that's award winning, isn't it? Now the only problem when you put that type of a photograph into a competition, because judges see so many of them, and they have to be really outstanding. And the previous shot is just uh, a very nice shot, right, of of the event. But I think. A little bit of five minutes work pops it off the screen. And that's what we are talking about when we're in a group and we're talking about photography. I did not spend a huge amount of time on that. And that has moved on. And if you were to go into competition, you would be um, doing you'd be doing something like this as well. Now, let's look at the technicalities of it. It's a 3.3 megabyte uh, image, which is good, which gives her plenty of, of material to work with when it goes to print. It'll come up. It's one... It's one twenty-fifth of a second, which says you are brave if you handheld that. A twenty-fifth of a second is ha hard to handhold, right? Um, it would need to be in a tripod, but you got away with it. If you had anything less than 400 ISO, you wouldn't have got that. But you see the way the aperture opened up to 2.8, which, is, which gives you a, a shallow depth of field, but in this case you got away with it because it is a shallow area. But if you were looking for a larger depth of field there, you'd have to try and get that up to a, to a, to a, a, a smaller hole, a larger number. Uh, and then you'd have to change the ISO to do that as well within your camera. But leaving all that aside... It's still an award-winning print, I think. If that was in competition, I think you, you, we would all give it high marks. The next one came in from from Eileen. And Eileen is uh, up and running now with us. And uh, we're having difficulties with Eileen in our little subgroups. That came out wrong. What I mean with her computer, uh, that she is, get this right, she's all sound and no picture because we're getting the sound but not uh, the picture and other people were getting picture but not sound so we're working on all those uh, issues so we have so when it comes to the group time we still have those people in because they can still share their screen with us and it makes a huge difference when somebody can share their screen because we can talk about it we are all struggling everybody is struggling and uh, it's i think it's worth it at the end when, when you get along with us stay with us stay the course because at the end you will have improved at uh, no end and uh, this is a lovely shot that she put in and we worked through getting it uploaded and all the different variations of it i think this might be um interesting i wonder is it i don't know i took i took it out anyway <laughs> i took it out in this one darkened it down a little bit and very quickly but not finished off very well i put a bit gr more grass here in front of it just to hold it in all right and um, quite a nice quite see how big that file is 7.3 megabytes no that's that's good she took it at one four hundred of a second because she, there will be a certain amount of movement in there and um it was 5.9 70 millimeter lens so she was relatively close when she was taking it and the iso went to uh, you can see there the camera that she took it with right so that's another lovely lovely photograph um uh, I'm cropped a slightly different. You can disagree with me. Now that needs more work. Obviously, you would do a lot more work if it was going to print. I'm just giving you suggestions. This one came in from Dennis, and um, he liked this photograph. He said it's his best photograph. I can see why, because it's one of those occasions where you just got it, right? You got you got the shot, and. Um, there wasn't a lot that I did to it. I tried playing with it. I might have messed it up more than improving it. And that's what I came up with. I just brought out the rainbow more and I darkened it down. I left everything else as Dennis had uh, had shot it. Now let's see what where this comes from. Look at how small it is. 444 kilobytes. It's a small. So it might be cropped from a much bigger from a much bigger image. Let me see. What did we say? Um it was yeah, it was. Yeah, I just went back to the previous one to see what size it was. I did, there was no, no. Maybe the original was much, much bigger than it. 64 ISO. He shot it an eighth of a second. Uh, from a 60 up, up you can handhold, right? But you have control over that shutter speed if you want it. F11 is is perfect for what he's doing because he wants full 
depth of field. If you change your ISO, you could bring up your shutter speed and make that easier uh, to hold. All right. I'm just talking this in technicalities for when you're in this situation. But obviously, set it on program, lift the camera, shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, this one comes in from Declan. And uh, Declan is also having, doesn't have his full lot of uh, photographs um, with him. But this is one that he, he sent in to us. And if you notice, it's a square photograph. Why is it square? Because Declan uses Instagram. And nearly all Instagram photographs are square. So that might be the reason why he has it done square. He has it set up, he's shot this on his phone. And it's in a ratio of 1 is to 1. Right? Or square. So this is a lovely photograph. We didn't do anything with it because we were under pressure. But we, we, we did a little bit of work on it afterwards. Now... What I like about it, what I don't like about it is this little light here just caught in the corner. And this fella here gave me a lot of trouble. So I went playing with it, and this is what I came up with. Okay. Now this one, um, uh, I, I, I brought it into the rectangular format. I think the three lights and the way they are lit is very, very nice. Darken down the sky here. These three people here are very interesting. This man behind the pole... I think if I was to go any further with it and I had more time, I would take him out as well. But you did put him in the best place not to see him. You, hide, you hid him behind the pole. And if you put your, your lines of composition onto this with the thirds, you see that these people are where, where, where they intersect. And that was a adding to the uh, shot as well. Uh, one hundred of a second. You can hand hold that. 64. Could be it's 1.8, which means the lens is fully, fully opened. Could have changed that and changed your aperture if you wanted to to get more depth of field in. But you do need a probably a hundred here because you're trying to hand hold it and there's a bit of movement. The closer the people are to you, the more chance there is for, for movement in it. I think that's a lovely shot. This one is Bonnie's, and I have seen this before at a uh, in at a class and I know Barney and hopefully Barney is lo looking in and listening to us talked about this as well one night and it is a super shot it really is and there are four or five this is fine but there's four or five other possibilities for photographs in this and it was hard to decide upon which one you uh, that would be the best so I went playing with it and this is my comp my suggestion for it and that's what I came up with all right and what's been done is I have moved I have moved the boat right I have moved the boat no do you see the way the 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 I have to leave my see where the intersection of the of the turrets are where where the boat is I put that there I know it's a rule I know, and you can break rules if you want to, but it's a very good place to, 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 to start off with. That boat could have ended there, 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 or there within the shot, and all would have been good, all right? Um, and what else I did with it as well was I came up a little bit closer to it, and uh, I darkened down some areas, is all I did, and I brightened up some areas. I brightened across here. And I brightened up the boat. I think I might have brightened a few little bits here at, at the back. Just to give it that little sense of extra light coming to it. I could have given it a little dart of extra light there maybe as well. It is um, it's a suggestion. Uh, and when I was doing this photograph, there was four or five other ways that it could have been, um, that it could have been uh, worked on as well. Right? So that is a super shot. And loads and loads of possibilities possibilities oh yes let's have a look at this 160 of a second which makes it um hand holdable right uh, <clears throat> uh and it's f4.5 and uh, maybe with this type of a shot you might be thinking about looking for for uh, more depth of field from the foreground into the background that's why the background is not as sharp as the foreground that might be what you're looking for me and it adds to it you know i'm not saying one or the other i'm just saying if you wanted to, to have that depth of field you would have needed to have changed the aperture here this 4.5 is probably fully open for your camera all right so you'd want to make that maybe 11 or whatever, 8 or 11, whatever. Different cameras have different amounts. And in order to achieve that and to keep your shutter speed, you would have to pump up your ISO. 
system right and uh, if you see that's the advantage of the technicalities that are behind it's it's good and it can even be better when you understand uh, all these issues all right this one what came in from um, Bernice and uh, all I did was uh, I have two shots here I have them in the wrong sequence this is the one I had worked on um, and it is a nice showing of uh, of the four balls and it's got a nice little circle on it and the, 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 the C coming in it's also taking up the diagonal of the of the photograph it does need somebody in it and Mary is a is a super model and I know where that was taken in I that was here in Portugal um, uh, on one of our holidays and I think it's a it's it's a, a lovely shot and that was the other version of it, but that just had more magenta into it. And I took the magenta out of the previous one. It didn't come in the right sequence. Uh, this was sent in by Sir Patrick. Sir Patrick sent in two. And uh, uh, he knows now what I'm going to say. because uh, He's screaming at himself because this came in. And, he, uh, and he's now found a button to stop that from happening. So I, there's no need for that to be there. right? Because that will be in metadata anyway. If you really want to know what what date it is, and you can find that, if you go to your original file, right click, come down to properties, and look at it, the date is more than likely there. Or just look at it on the camera in the date data within the camera, it would also be there as well. So what well, all I did to it was I just took it out of it. Okay, it took about two or three seconds. I could take it out very very quickly because it was, you can see where I took it out of. But that's a nondescript area that doesn't matter. If it, the more higgly piggly it is there, the better. All right. Um, the uh, so uh, in that case it was very easy to no he's got a net on the corner now that might have come from his lens hood and the way he it was it was shot so one two hundredth of a second is easy to handhold it's an eight megabyte um, uh, image which is a huge image right which is great which is what you want for for when you're going to competition it's far better to be looking at it than looking for it right two hundredth of a second really easy to to handhold. And the aperture is coming through at f3, right? f3.2. And I presume that's 5mm wide angle lens that was on it. I don't know why it says 5 I'd be expecting to see something else, but that's beside the point. So uh, f3.2, because it's not very much light here, so it needs it for it. 200 is fine. Anything over 125th, 60 is pushing it. You could have pumped up the ISO if you wanted to. Uh, and you could run a tiny bit more aperture in there so you get from the foreground to the background but in this case it's all in the one plane and it works quite well now don't want to leave us why won't the oh whoop 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 it's doing something what's it doing what is it doing huh it's deciding to do something contrary on us. We just have to wait it out. Now, oh yes, we are we are on the move. Oh, we're not. We're back to there. We just have to wait wait for it to to work its way through. It's probably the the laptop is finding it difficult to cope with the streaming and the YouTube stream and all the bits and pieces. Okay. It was a man who was phone camera. That's a, that's a bit better. Susan Brown. Okay. Now, what's happening here? Will it let me close it off? It will. Okay. It comes back to there. What is it doing? Please go. Yep. It's oh, we're back to here. Okay. Hopefully, we're back to here. So that one was I was showing you the last was the last one of Pat's. Uh, last one of Pat's. That's where we, I'm just checking here. There were the images that I was showing to you. You've seen all of them. Yes, that was the last one. Okay, now come back to full camera. Now, wasn't that very good? I thought that stuff was absolutely superb. Huge improvement. That's the sort of stuff that we need to be doing if we want to go into competition and even for ourselves it's lovely to know i think you should all be very very proud of uh, what you did all right uh, it worked very well this time this time get, getting the uh, combinations 
uh, of the uh, downloading the images to me get on the Skype uh, works very well a couple of other things happen sometimes the things that I'm, you're not you don't prepare for often works out to be the best and I noticed that uh, Maura was giving advice to Declan on Skype on our little group that we set up called photo class and was eating our class just two unfortunately there's two of them to confuse the issue there's class and there's photo class class is, gets to 17 people and full class only gets to about eight or nine people uh, you can use either of them to put up messages to one another if you want to uh, it's great but don't make a call on it because it's not the way there's 17 or 18 people and they'll all get called at one time and the whole thing collapses down um, it's good and it's not good it's it, it's both was a great way and 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 at the end Declan got his is that his question answered uh, and that's a great place to, to, to if you have a question or alternatively put it up on friends of Anoiga and then somebody else can come back and answer the issue because you might understand it better than I do because you're working from the opposite side and you're trying to do it it's okay for me to say do this this and this uh, but I haven't done it and something goes wrong or you find another way of doing it that's that's brilliant you can also start talking to another on Skype uh, about the about the uh, the projects that you're doing and you can find one another that way if you want to find one another and you don't have one another's numbers you can put a message up uh, but be careful because it's public in uh, on friends of Anoiga or alternatively on friends of Anoiga you can go into the set into the info of the group and you can see each person's name come up in on it and then you can contact that person directly without ever going near friends of Anoiga their contact details are there you can text them or whatever so there's loads of ways you can keep in touch with, with, with one another uh, and, in, and remember now if you operate on, um, on Skype the beauty of Skype is that you can share your screen so if one person is having a trouble they can share their screen with somebody else and we can use all this as a part of the learning curve right then right then what do we do next hmm do you want to know what your next project is well I have been pushing the 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 boat out more and more and I've been changing your your comfort zones as to where you you operate and um, this next one that I'm going to suggest to you uh, it, just put something in it doesn't matter how good bad or indifferent it is it's the pact of putting the effort in and putting it in we all learn don't be worried about criticism or anything like that um, the uh, just go with what uh, what you feel yourself I hope the sound, the sound was okay there I just noticed something with the sound that's when my concentration was, was gone anyway what I want for the next project is I want you to pick a photograph it can be from your best 12 it can be from your phone it can be from anywhere all right uh, I've been talking to different people and I've seen when we'll be putting images in when our screens were split uh, some people know how I suggested a, an image that might be suitable for this but don't have to go with that one it's just to use photography in a different way we use photography in Instagram we use photography uh, for exhibition we use photography for profile photographs we use it this is a different one we're going to do a little blog all right and this is going to live in a little hole all right and my idea is you take a photograph and it's a photograph that you like it was a photograph that was very difficult to take it's something that really frustrates you uh, the one that I often think about is Eileen Eileen put up on whatsapp after being with me for a period of time and she was frustrated and bewildered and confused and she put up a lovely humorous one that she had gone home and taken off the uniform and threw the bag in the corner and took to the brandy and I thought that was lovely so something along those lines is you could take a photograph of the computer you know uh, and you can make it humorous and put a title into it and it's always, it's a two one thing is a photograph or two if you want to if it takes two and then there's a po couple of words put with it so you could have something like let's say um, uh, somewhere between 20 to 100 words and you don't have to be a journalist or anything doesn't matter how good bad or different it's to see how the system will work and when it comes to uploading it my suggestions are that if you want to write it out at first 
um, write it out in a Word document. Now, a Note is on your uh, computers as a freebie, and I use I use Note all the time. Right, I use Note all the time, and um, it's a great place to to operate it. Right, um, and then I can copy and. The sound is bad again. Okay, thank you. Let me see. Go away from me there. Now, is that any? Now, I've I've pumped it up a little bit better. It's gone down. Thank you. It's great. We 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 know those things. Um. No, I think that sound should be better. I have re-adjusted uh, something on it. So back to the the project, and uh, what you do is you upload the image in the usual way with the usual system with the usual name, the system. Uh, you set up a new folder in the AA folder now. It's going to be called P3 Project Three, and it's going to be blog. You can call it or what, whatever. All your images to do with it will go in there. Your writing will go in there. The image will be up will be sent to me on my Skype uh, name as you've done with all the other stuff. And the photograph will go by adding the the image to it as you always have. But the um, the the copy bit, the written bit, will come by putting it into the, to leave a common portion underneath it. Uh, you can copy it from your notepad or wherever you have it and put it in there. All right. And this is for, oh, you have to work hard, don't you? Because the next live stream is going to be on um, Thursday. So you have until tomorrow lunchtime to do it, or the majority by tomorrow lunchtime, and then a couple of people can put it in a bit later. If I get the earlier ones, it helps me enormously when I when I'm putting together. My plan is that you get an easy project, says he, uh, in the from from the on the Tuesday, and a more difficult one on the one that goes over the weekend where you have more time. So that's what the project is. And I look forward to seeing it coming in. Uh, it can be very, very interesting. It can be uh, the, the, how you took a photograph. It can be how you struggled on the computer. It can be a little, a little tutorial. It can say, I took this photograph and this is the way I did it. And if I did it again, I would do it that way. It doesn't have to be rocket science now or whatever. But I want to kind of get the idea of, of this, of this operating. Um, and you know, you don't have to, as I make a Bible, I'm trying to sell this. And I'm hoping you all ag agree to it because there's a nice little surprise at the end of it. As there is today. All right. Those wonderful photographs that have come in are now up. Well, they are, yes. They are now up on our website. The website that we are playing with for Anoiga, the one that I am trying to get up and developed. And I had a look at it myself because I was playing with it as I knew it was there. And uh, I'm impressed. I think it looks as good as any other uh, photographic group's um, uh, website. No, not all of it. There's an awful lot of the website is in, is in a mess. But the page that's called, um, uh, what did I call it now? Oh, I've forgotten what I called it. Class. Class images or something I have called it. If you go into the full full website, it's it's under more. And uh, but what I'm going to do is after this uh, course is over, I'm going to send out on the um, on the Skype class one and on the phone WhatsApp a link to it. It's going to link to the actual page that all the photographs are on that your images are on, right? And I think it's impressive. And uh, I, this is what we've always wanted to achieve, and I think it's really going forward. I think you're all going to be pleased with it as well. Well, I hope so, anyway. Um, so that's your surprise, and it'll be coming in a few minutes. It will be um, on WhatsApp, on Friends of. You can also watch. You can also look at this on a laptop, and you can also look at it on the phone. They are two different mediums, and they work differently on on both. This is a freebie that we're building up. So you can look through the rest of the website and we'll be working on the other bits of it. Okay, so that's the story. I have no more to say and uh, no major comments coming up. Hopefully you got the sound right in the bits and pieces afterwards. Uh, there's theoretically about 12 people watching us, which is great. If you want to go back and check out the bits that you missed, that's fine. I can get other people to watch this as well. Try and encourage other people to our live stream that you know by ringing them or, or telling them or sending them a link afterwards um, to, to it. 
So take care. Thank you for your patience. And especially thank you for all the wonderful images. And nothing was meant as a criticism. It was just that we can all learn from it. So I look forward to seeing you in your classes. Group 2 and 1 and 2 tomorrow. Uh, and it's on Skype. Then on Thursday we're back here on YouTube for the next one. And then on Friday is groups 3 and 4.1. Because 4 had a little issue with it. So we had to change the number of it. But that goes with the territory. Okay, looking forward to seeing you. Thank you all for coming. And all off now for a nice cup of coffee. Thank you. Bye.